Hi, this is Cassidy Cash with Ask Dr. Callahan. A student recently asked me, hey Cassidy, how can I graph on uh, my graphs without using graph paper? Obviously, we're used to the idea of graphs looking like this, where we have, you know, our Y and our X, and we might, you know, plot our points based on where the grid intersects, right? Well, she says, okay, well, first of all, I don't have graph paper. And then second of all, what about fractions? How do I graph partial points? Well, I'm really glad she asked. And today we're going to show you in this little video how to do both of these things. Okay, so step one. If I have no graph paper, what do I do? Well, here are three steps that you can do. Step one. is to label everything, okay? And what that means is when you're drawing your lines, you know, you want them to be straight, but you also want to make sure that you have your arrows on the end and that you label your X and Y axis, okay? Then, when you're defining your uh, domain and range, the domain being the values on your X axis and the range being the values on your Y axis, you want each of those points to be equidistant, which means um, the same distance apart. Much like on graph paper, where we have, you know, the individual squares are the same distance apart every time, when we don't have graph paper, we want to be sure that we're drawing lines that are fairly close to the same distance apart all the way down. And that applies to both sides of the axis. We want to make sure that they're pretty much the same distance. Now, you could do wider or narrower like I have on the x-axis as long as you're consistently the same distance between each point. Now what you don't want to do is have you know points like here I'm making them about you know half an inch apart or so. You don't want to have you know these three being half inch apart and then all of a sudden I'm going to decide to put you know point eight way out here. You want every single one of your points to be the, the same distance apart. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And this could be 1, 2, and 3. But as long as your points are the same distance apart, you're good. Um, just as a note, it does work out better if both of your axes use the same, you know, equidistance. So if you're doing about, you know, a half inch here, you would want these to be about a half inch. And that's like approximate. Please don't get out your ruler and graph it. After all, we are trying to be simpler. Another thing that you can do then is to have a straight edge. I mean, it doesn't have to be a ruler. You could take a sheet of printer paper and fold it in half. You could use the binding of a book or even the smooth side of a CD case. Any household object that you have that has a smooth straight edge, DVD case works well. Any kind of smooth straight edge that you can use to connect your points in your graph so that your lines are straight uh, will work. And all of these are great tools for getting accurate graphs without graph paper. Now to the second part of your question. When it comes to fractions, fractions are very simply in between your whole number points. So for example, on here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 labeled all the way up there. If I wanted to figure out where you know, like let's say I had the point 3, 1.5. I would go out to 3 on my x-axis and then go up 1 and a little bit more and put my point. That is about halfway between 1 and 2 on my y-axis and it represents 1.5. Again, because you are using regular printer paper instead of graph paper, it's not as accurate as you would use. But, I mean, we'll go here and show you what it looks like with the graph paper. Even with the graph paper, you're still choosing a point that's in between the two grid lines. So it's, it's still, you know, it's pretty accurate to do, you know, halfway up. And that's how you do fractions. So um, if you had the fraction, you know, three-fourths, it's probably going to be easiest to convert it to a decimal and say, okay, well, that's 0.75. So it's probably, you know, a little higher than... 0.5, but not quite to 2, you know, and if you're trying to be really precise, when you're labeling your axis even, 
you can come up here and say, okay, well, I'm going to label this as like 0.2, and this is 0.4, and 0.6, you know, so that every point represents 0.2 of a decimal. So you're all the way up here before you even get to one. So, you know, this is two tenths, four tenths, six tenths, eight tenths, and you can break up your lines so that you're representing more of the fraction if you really wanted to, to break it down and be super precise. That's not necessary, really, most of the time. I mean, it kind of depends on what the problem asks for. If you have points that are like 0 0.2, 0 0.9, and you're trying to graph that, yeah, breaking it out to where each of your lines represents a fraction is probably the way to go. But when it's more like 3 and 1 and a half, using this notation is perfectly fine. To follow up on this video or to ask new questions, please visit our website at www.askdrcallahan.com, click on homework help, then ask questions here, and we'll be glad to help.